a principle called the second law of thermodynamics derived from the works of people such as Carnot, Clausius, Maxwell, Boltzmann and Zillard, is a fundamental concept in science and physics. It describes how energy and everything related to energy, such as heat and work, evolve over time and interact with the environment. How heat and energy is transferred from one side to another and how it behaves in closed and open environments. To help us understand this principle and its connections to the concept of information, let's perform what is called a thought experiment. That is, an experiment that one can run in one's own mind to reach some sort of logical conclusion. In this case, is going to rather be illustrated by an actual computer simulation. So let's imagine for an instant that we have a room with gas. Gas is made of particles, so particles are free in the room only constrained by the room walls. Particles are moving around, bouncing against each other. Here is an illustration of 100 particles, shown in black inside a square of size 100 by 100 pixels. For illustration purposes, the room can be divided in 100 by 100 cells, each of the same size, making 10,000 cells that can contain one of the 100 particles. To describe any particular state of the room at any given time, we would have to provide the bit value of those 10,000 particles. Alternatively, we can simply give the 100 coordinates where the particles are located. If the room were empty, however, it would so just suffice to say that the room is empty and nothing else. That would characterize the state of the room in a very simple description. But if the particles are distributed randomly, then one would need to provide exact coordinate for each particle, and no simpler description would be possible in order to reproduce the same state of the room. If you wanted to describe this room, you would need to provide the exact location of each particle. But there was an idea in quantum physics to partially circumvent the need to study such detailed descriptions that are impossible to get in practice, and even in principle, according to some aspects of quantum mechanics when we are considering very small particles. So statistical mechanics makes qualitative assessments instead of providing the exact locations. It would characterize the room statistically, in this case, for example, as typically disordered. What the second law of thermodynamics would then tell is that most configurations will look disordered and those ordered will be unlikely to appear by chance and if they did, they would be unstable and quickly evolve into disordered configurations. The room would then be said to be in high entropy configuration. Such qualitative description is statistical in nature. The idea is that if you plot the distribution of the particles across all the possible places in which they could be, the distribution would look the same for most random configurations, and thus anything which such distribution would be characterized set as being in the same state of disorder. So this is the way in which the distribution of the particles in our room looks like when dividing the room into smaller square pieces of equal size. So when looking at the room in 100 places, no particular place seems to have any particular feature, meaning that particles are mostly distributed equally. The same when dividing the room into 20, 10 and only 5 places to look at, as if we were looking at the corners and center to see if there is some arrangement of the particles to notice. But basically everything looks the same in any direction. Imagine that you were able to place the same number of particles into a smaller room. What would happen is that the same number of particles have now fewer places to be, what is called less degrees of freedom, or less cells in the square to be or to move into. So because there is less room for the particles in the new room, it can be said that the room has a lower entropy compared to the larger one for the same number of particles but different volume or area. If one reduced the number of particles, it would also lead to less entropy because you would need to describe less particles. So entropy is a function of at least three elements, the number of particles, the size of the space, and the number of places in which the particles can be. 
Imagine you pushed all particles into a smaller and smaller place in the corner of the room. Only moving one particle outside that corner would make entropy to increase. So what does it tell us the second law of thermodynamics? It tells us that if we looked at a room with some gas particles, the chances to find the room in a disarranged or disordered state, that is of high entropy, has much greater chances because there are many of those configurations that distribute particles in the random looking distribution compared to a particular arrangement of low entropy, like the one with all the particles in the corner. In other words, there are many more possible disordered arrangements than ordered ones, and low entropy configurations will tend to produce higher entropy configurations if left unattended, and no work is performed to place them in a single, non-random looking configuration. So, it is the case that to reach a special configuration, one has to invest work or apply energy to push all the particles to the corner. Moreover, if the particles were moving at, at constant speed, by pushing them into a corner, they would bounce each other with higher frequency, producing heat, that when released, would naturally cool down, hence establishing a strong connection with heat and te temperature. This is why this law or guiding principle is so important, because it connects, connects most if not all the fundamental quantities in physics, but it is also all about information, as we saw before, as it involves knowledge about the position of the particles and ways to steer them to one side or the other. So we have connected information, heat, this measure of disorder, entropy, and temperature. So the second law of thermodynamics tells us that, in general, because particles will tend to maximal entropy, they will also dissipate heat over time instead of gaining it, and they will eventually reach thermodynamic equilibrium by matching the environment's temperature, just as it happens with hot drinks, eventually reaching room temperature. This also means that if you disconnect your fridge, it will reach room temperature soon because of the second law of thermodynamics, even though there are chances that it can remain cold or even colder, but those chances are so incredibly small that it will almost never happen. It is right then to think of the second law of thermodynamics as a law based on probability and deeply connected to information about the specific and overall configuration of a system. The traditional way in which the second law of thermodynamics for a closed system like our room is formally written is like this. The increase of entropy represented by S over time, T, will remain or increase but not decrease. 